Welcome back to Core Cutting Today, where we break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting, including local television stations are becoming optional for direct TV, big impact on core cutting also, we'll break down why, most Americans prefer to watch movies at home now rather than going to movie theaters, we'll tell you just by how much from a new study, and at and is investing billions into their network, we'll tell you about these stories and a whole lot more here in a minute. First though, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Doing one or both lets YouTube know you enjoy what we do here. So YouTube recommends our videos to more people, helping us grow, helping us uh, spread our word about core cutting, and hopefully helping you break free from the high cost of television. If you would also like to learn more about any story we talk about, I'll put a link to each story in the first pinned comment and in the show notes down below. Starting off today with DirecTV is making local ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC channels optional with new packages. Now, big catch here, DirecTV satellite only, not DirecTV via internet, not DirecTV stream. Those two streaming options still include locals. They would, I am assume, love to be able to have those on all their packages. But for now, locals on streaming are negotiated differently. What happens for most ones, for example, if I'm YouTube TV, I go to Paramount and I strike a contract with Paramount for their channels or CBS channels on my service. And then they, we get a national feed. Locals have a chance to either supply their feed under those terms or not, and then there'll be a national feed. This happened last year with Fubo. Fubo struck a deal with Paramount that some locals didn't like, and several hundred local channels disappeared and were replaced with a national feed of CBS. Because of that, we found um, very quickly locals struck a, uh, agreed to the terms and then put their logos back on because I think they realized it was harming them more. DirecTV has been very much an advocate of being able to offer locals as an add-on or not. Last year, they had several major blackouts with several very large owners of channels, including the largest in Nexstar. Now with that, they're now able to offer a $12 a month cheaper TV plan by not including locals. That works out to be about $140 a year in savings. This is great for anybody who can get their locals with an antenna for free. But if you are uh, in an area where you need locals, you can pay the extra 12 bucks and get it. I really hope this comes to more streaming options. Of course, you have Sling TV. They've done this for many years. Sling TV's big selling point is you were cheaper because we don't offer locals. Uh, while for some people that's great, like I said, if you have an antenna, awesome. But if you don't, then maybe Sling TV is not right for you. It'd be great if Hulu, YouTube TV, Fubo, and others started were able to get similar deals and offer. One package with locals, one package without locals. You know me, for years I've said one of the most annoying fees is the broadcast television fee on cable TV companies. They market it, they advertise it as having these channels, but then when you get the package, there's an additional and 30 plus dollars now often of broadcast television fees on cable TV companies that you can't opt out of. So why isn't that $30 built into the price of the bundle? Because it's not something you can just decline if you don't want it. So I do love this, I hope more continue to do it. I think this will put pressure on streaming services to follow Sling TV's lead and at least offer more options of lo no locals on the television network. All right, there was a new survey out there um, from Herrix X Polls, which was an exclusive for IndieWire. They broke this um, over at IndieWire. It says only 34% of Americans prefer to watch uh, movies in theaters. Big problem here is 20 years ago, most people had very small TVs, very poor sound systems. Um, nowadays, 50 plus inch screen TVs are very normal. Nice surround sound is very affordable. And let's be honest, the food is cheap, cheaper and better, which was another complaint here. People listed the high cost of food. I saw several people comment, you can't take a family of four to the movies and buy all the tickets plus food and not end up with $100 plus bills. Increasingly, people are saying, hey, I'm willing to wait for Disney Plus, Netflix, or others to get that movie. I may not even rent it when it comes out. Maybe I'll wait for Max, Paramount Plus, Peacock, and others to offer that new Top Gun movie or other movie that's on the market right now. So question of the day, when was the last time you went to a movie? It's been several years for me, to be honest with you. Do you prefer the movie theater experience or the home experience? I prefer the home experience. Even if, yeah, it could be better in the movies, just uh, watching it when I want to watch it, pause it, get up, go to the bathroom, deal with the kids and the like, I would much rather do that. So let me comment, let me know what you would prefer to do. 
AT&T has announced last week that they have invested $145 billion in the last five years to improve its wireless and fiber networks. AT&T has been very busy building out um, its fiber and wireless networks. This comes as it lost um, 98,000 internet customers in 2023, mostly to older DSL customers who are switching to things like 5G home internet. To help with that, AT&T last year launched its own 5G home internet service, targeting areas where it still doesn't have fiber and is offering slow, older DSL. AT&T for years now has not offered to sell new DSL packages to new customers. This $145 um, million, or billion, dollars, excuse me, allows it to invest in fiber and 5G wireless spectrums to offer high-speed home internet. It is the truth that in 2024, there are more options than ever. And because of that, we're seeing, oh, loss of network connection for some reason this Fire TV has been doing with this. So I apologize. But with that deal, we're seeing increasing a number of people out there that are dealing with loss of um, air, high speed internet, limited options, becoming a thing of the past as we're getting 5G home internet, Starlink later this year, Amazon home internet, and other providers out there offering internet service. So let me know, are you one of the people out there? It was not that long ago when I started Core Cars News, I didn't even have 20 down. DSL was like nine down when I first moved into um, Fort Leonard Road, Missouri. We had cable, which was only six down. And when we left, they had a blazing speed increase to 20 down internet. It was all over, billboards ever, 20 down. This was like in 2015, not that long ago, where they were um, only able to offer 20 down. We've come a long way in a few years. Let me know what you think of that. But it's great to see this competition though, putting pressure on AT&T to invest $145 billion into their network. All right, last week, it's been hard to believe, it's been over, I think a week now roughly since this news broke, but um, Roku, 115,000 Roku accounts were hacked. Now, a lot of people have been saying Roku had a data breach. No, Roku did not have any data breach. Actually, what happened was other sites and services did, and then people reused the same email and password on multiple accounts, including Roku. It's very common to go breach some random site out there, take the usernames, takes the passwords, and apply them to paid services like Disney Plus and others to see if it works. If it does, then they take that account, sell it online for a dollar, 50 cents, whatever, that allows people to go and use Disney Plus, Hulu, and others for free or at least cheaply through that system. Now, with this, Roku customers who had their credit cards saved to the account, people used it to buy subscriptions to different streaming services and even buy streaming players. Roku identified this because um, they saw the ads being promoted on dark sites of selling this. And then they um, cut those off and they went and refunded the affected customers and notified them. But how can you protect yourself from this? We have a full story over at cordcartersnews.com, link in the show notes. But in short, don't reuse passwords, especially don't reuse passwords to important paid sites. Your bank account password should never be reused. Sites that you do paid services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon should never be reused. Keep that in mind. But again, Roku was not actually hacked. That's been widely reported, that's not correct. People hacked other sites and then tested it against Roku. And it really is comes down to the owners of those accounts reusing passwords. All right, can anybody stop YouTube TV's explosive growth? We talked about this a lot, but there's a big question and I wanna ask you, and I did a full report about it and there's one service out there that I think could actually compete with YouTube TV. YouTube TV saw it, um, its growth in 2023 at 1.9 million new subscribers. That's more than Hulu Plus Live TV, Sling TV, and Fubo combined times 10. You add up those three other services and you times their subscribers by 10 and YouTube TV is still bigger than them, which is really great to see. Uh, that there's competition, people are picking something, but can somebody stop them? Do we want YouTube TV from dominating the market? That's the question. So let me know. Who do I think could stop them? I think it's a new sports streaming service coming out from Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Fox. If that is anything close to what we think it is, what they're saying it will be, I think that could actually be a real competitor to um, YouTube TV.
All right, and that brings up the next story. Disney has appointed a CEO, former head of Hulu's content, and more recently, Apple TV is going to be taking over Pete Distad, D I S T A D. I apologize, dyslexic. People mispronounce my last name, so I apologize. But he's going to be taking over this yet to be formed company. Now, this is interesting. The company's not formed that will run this, it'll be independent of the three, and those companies will have equal ownership or shared ownership is a better way to put it. He will oversee the development of the company and he will also see oversee the creation of a board of directors, which he will report to. It'll be very interesting to see what happens there. Early reports suggested the service being the 30 to 40 hour report. Um, later it was suggested 40 to $50 that the service would be. And I kind of, Fox has kind of hinted at me at 40 to 50. I think if it's 50, it's probably too much. 40, 45 is probably a more realistic price that this service would be competitive at. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. All right, let's dive into the question of the day. Every day I try to answer a question. If you have a question for me, leave me a comment. Start off with something like a question for Luke. I know we just had the weekend. Often a lot of questions come in over the weekend. And I'll be honest with my family, I'm not always paying as much attention. Please re-ask your question if I didn't answer it over the weekend. But today's question is, um, Luke, I love your show. Is there any avail anywhere available to get major political new or news channels like CNN, MSN, Fox, and others outside of paid subscriptions? If not, what's the least expensive service? No, there are no legal ways to watch those live. Now, they most of these networks now do post free versions of their content. Um, out there, CNN does have an alternate version of it on Max. If you're a Max subscriber, it's available there. There is uh, Pluto TV, Tubi, Fubo, and others have news feeds from many of these places. While well, not live, it's recent clips of it um, with that. Now, CNN or CBS, uh, excuse me, and NBC do offer a 24 7 live feed of news streaming online. Well, it's not the MSNBC, it's not Fox, it's not CNN. It is a major um, free source of news through places like Pluto TV, the Roku channel, and others. If you're looking for the cheapest way to actually get Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, and others, Sling TV is probably your, your best bet. Starting at uh, 40 bucks right there, your first month around 20 right now. Um, depending which package you get, you can get Fox, CNN, MSNBC. Uh, far cheaper than many of the other options on the market. But then there's YouTube TV, Fubo, Hulu Plus Live TV, and the like. But I would check out Pluto TV, the Roku channel. See if they offered the news you're looking for out there. But I understand a lot of people are very tied to a particular news show they really enjoy. If that's the case, you may want to think about Sling TV. I hope that answered your question. Leave me a comment, let me know. But those are all your legal options and we only promote legal options here. With that said, I hope you have a fantastic day. I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Take care, everybody.